All right, let's go ahead and jump right into the project. Hopefully you've got everything installed okay. You should have done that in lesson one, and if so, you can open up your integrated terminal or wherever you want to run this and just type npm run dev. You have to have npm installed at first, but I'm assuming you've already done that. Once you do that, you should be able to go to port 5173 or whatever it gives you down here and open it up and you should be set. So it should look like this. You should have all this already in there by default. All we want to do is add a settings section down here. And that's what we're going to do in this second lesson is add the basic code for kind of this section and start to stylize it. Now, the hard thing about this will be we're not going to see a lot of change yet. That will start to come in the next lesson where we do this motion on and off. All right, so let's go ahead and jump over this way. And the first thing I want to do is jump to my index.html page. We're going to scroll all the way down and you'll see that we've got several sections. So maybe let's close the sidebar. I'll close the terminal just so we can kind of see what's going on here. And let's close down some of these sections just to make it a little bit easier to see. So everything's inside of a wrapper, so we don't want to close that. However, we've got this header tag, we can close that. The main we also don't want to close. What we want to do is just come here and collapse these sections. So inside the main, but below the final section is where we want to add our settings section. And because this is kind of a section aside from the main body of the HTML, I want to go ahead and add this as an aside tag. Now, if I jump back over to the finished code on my website, you can see that we've got a header and then we've got these sections down here. Now, one of the things that can be really nice if you want to kind of debug what stuff looks like is you can come inside here and let me just come into the elements tab and let me close down the mobile view just so we can see a little bit better. Now, I'm going to come inside here and just inside the body, if I can get this to let me edit it as HTML, we're going to add a style tag and inside the style tag, I just want to take everything and I want to add to this a border about one pixel solid and red. Now what this will allow us to do, if I hit command and enter, is see everywhere on the entire site. So we got all these little sections. So as you can see, what we've got is a section here, a section here, and these kind of have their own sections. And then we've got a gap inside here. So this red section right here is the HTML we're gonna start adding everything inside of. That will be kind of like our site wrapper, or settings wrapper. Then I have a header right here, and then below here I have another section that has two sections inside of it. So let's go ahead and add the code that we need for all those. So if I come inside this aside tag, I wanna go ahead and add that settings wrapper. So if I just do dot settings wrapper, this will use Emmet in VS Code by default to basically give me a class, a div with a class of settings wrapper inside of it. Now you might remember I've got an H2 right here. So I'll do H2 and this will just say custom site settings. All right, next below that, we've got this section right here. So I'm gonna come over here and do dot settings and that will give me a div with a class of settings. And this will have two basic sections, this stack right here and this stack right here. And we can kind of name these whatever we want, but since they're stacks, usually I'd have more like a whole design system thought out, but this is the only thing we're really doing in the HTML. So let's just add a stack tag right here and another one here. So this will be this stack. You see how these are all evenly spaced and this will be this stack and these are evenly spaced as well. Okay, so we've got all of those set and ready to go. And that's kind of the core of what we're gonna do in the HTML. Now, in order to understand how we're gonna write the CSS, I need to open up our CSS file and see what we've already done in there. Now, as we interact with the CSS, I will explain certain things here and there. Right now, the only thing I wanna show you is just two things. One is we've got a container class. Now, if I scroll all the way down here, right here, you can see that the container class is going to keep everything in the center, and it's also going to limit how wide it can be. This is a little bit of gobbledygook. Um, uh, there's, there are easier, less hotshot ways to write this, but this is just how I happen to have write it, uh, written it at the time. So you can see I've got 100 view width minus 70 rem divided by two, which splits it on either side since this is margin left and right. And then basically the maximum, it's gonna choose between one of these two, whichever one is bigger, either 1.5 rem or this right here. Okay, so if that doesn't make sense, all you need to know is that we'll keep everything in the center. So let's come back over here and I wanna add that to my side. So we'll say class, and I'm gonna call this container. That's a good uh, practice to go ahead and label these kind of major sections or sides. So I'm gonna give this an ARIA label, and this will say settings section. And this is uh, another way you could do this is pointing it to the, an ID of this H2 as well, but this will help assistive technology know what this section is about, this is a side is about. Okay, next, the other thing I wanna do is I wanna add a special class to this H2. So to show you once again, if I come over this way, you're gonna see that I've got h1 tags and anything with a dot h1, h2 tags, and anything with a dot h2, et cetera, et cetera. So the dot obviously is a class. And so what I'm saying is if it has a class of h2, go ahead and give it this. Now, the reason I add 
classes and or tags. I kind of have this as the default for an H1 or the default for an H2, but sometimes you might have a semantic H2 that you want to actually be styled a little bit different. So if I save this and jump over here, you're gonna see down here we've got custom site settings. However, I can come inside here and do class H3. When I save this, you'll notice it gets a smaller font size. So it's styled like an H3, but I get to use the right semantic tag. Generally speaking, you want an H2 per section or per side per major content area in your site. So this says what this entire section is about, and that's what I want to do. Okay, so that's all I'm doing here is I'm applying this, even though it happens to be an H2 tag. Let's jump back over this way and just kind of think through what else we have to do then. This section's wrapper right here needs to be able to stack the font right here, this H2, with the other sections down below it. Then these settings sections need to be able to stack these stacks next to each other on desktop and move one down below the other on mobile. So let's go ahead now and do that. So if I scroll all the way down to the bottom of the CSS file, we're going to add a bunch of things in this settings section. This is where we'll do all the CSS we need to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab the settings wrapper. And if I jump back over to the HTML, you'll remember that this is this thing right here that kind of keeps everything in the center of the settings section down below. So right over here, settings wrapper, I want to do a couple things. First of all, I want to set this as display of grid. This will stack it naturally up and down, which is what I want. And then we'll set a max width here. This is the way of capping it side to side. Here we're going to say 1050 pixels. And then finally, we'll use a logical property for margins or margin inline. That's margin left and right for right to left languages. We'll just set this to auto so it stays in the center. Now, we also want some gap between things. But in order to see that, I want to come down here and uh, let's go ahead and grab the settings itself. This was the div right here that holds these two stacks. And let's go ahead and set the background color here to red. We'll set the width to 100% and height to like, I don't know, 30 pixels, something like that. So you can see it showing up down this way. Now we'll also come inside and grab the two stacks. So we'll say stack, not stacks, but stack like that. And we'll do the same thing. So I'll set background color, except this time, I guess maybe let's do blue or something. So it's really easy to see. We'll say width 100% and we'll say height uh, 30, sure. And maybe just to give us a little bit of space, we're gonna say padding of like three rem. Okay, so now we've got these two sections inside of here. Maybe that's a little, a little big, how about one rem? And maybe we should give this extra height too. So let's do like 200 pixels just so we've got enough room. Okay, so we've got two sections. It's kind of hard to see down there, uh, but this is what we've got going. And I'm going to change this to white just so it doesn't burn my eyes too much. Okay, so now what I want to do is provide some space between all the children. Right now, the children would be this and this red box down this way. Now, like I said, as we do certain things in CSS, I'll explain them and the code up above. So we're going to use some of these properties that I set up top, these variables up top. So you'll notice under the root, I've declared a bunch of things about the fonts, about the radius options, about the easing, and then importantly, for space. So this space is what we're going to use to set our gap. Now, the nice option is we've got space dash whatever size you want, and that way you stay consistent in your spacings. So if I scroll down, we're going to do a gap of small. That will basically be as small as this and as big as this, depending on the screen size. So this clamp property is super useful. If you haven't used clamp before, then you'll really enjoy this. So let's come down here and let's say just below the grid, we'll say gap var space and small. So I'll go ahead and save that. Now you can see this spacing is shown right here. Now let's get down to the settings itself. And here we're going to say display of flex. So what we want these to do is be stacked side by side. So we'll say align items will be flex start. That ensures that no matter the size of the content inside of them, they start at the top and kind of hug to the top of this parent container, this red container. Now let's go ahead and set a gap on these as well. And you can actually set it up and down and then left and right as well. So that's what we're going to do. So up and down, we want this to be a space of large, another one of those spacing variables, and then we'll do space of medium for left and right. So if I save this, you'll see now I get a gap between these here. Now, what happens when I get to a mobile screen size? Well, I want this to flex wrap of wrap. That means I want it to wrap down below when it can no longer fit itself. You'll see that that's what it does. Now we're eventually going to take this width off. Oh, not there, uh, down this way. So let's set this to something like 100 pixels. And now if I come over here, you'll see them there. Maybe we need to boost this a bit. How about 250? All right, so now they'll wrap next to each other when they can't fit. And then when they can't fit, they'll snap up next to each other. And that's what we want. Okay, lastly, and then I'm going to take all of these things off because we don't need these anymore. This is just to show you what we are doing. We're going to have a font size of var 
And here's another one of those custom properties. We've got a bunch of font size, FS, and you've got 2XL, X large, medium, small, and extra large. And you can see we're using the same kind of clamp principle where we have a small size and an ideal size, and then the maximum it's allowed to get. In this case, I actually want to make all the font size for the settings my smallest font possible. Now, you're not going to be able to see anything right now. Uh, you can just barely see those white outlines of the stacks. But eventually, this will keep our font sizes throughout that entire section too small. Okay, finally, we just got the stacks down here. And these are going to be hard because there's nothing inside them yet. But we're basically going to add a display of grid, which will stack everything up and down by default. And then we'll do var space of small. And then just to make sure that the whole stacks span the width they can, we'll set the width to 100%. Okay, so we've done everything we need to do in this lesson. We set up the basic HTML, kind of understood how we need it to all stack based on kind of previewing the final site. And now what we've done is set up the CSS so that we're ready to actually add these individual sections inside of here. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to talk all about this motion on-off switch.